Hey, it's Honey, and guess what? You know it. I have another amazing guest tonight, but even more special than that, I have my very special friend and co-host, Bronson. Culver tonight, probably have some mysterious uh, uh, pop, uh, what do you call it? surprise visits from the cat and maybe even a hello from Miss Brandy. He has someone special. I haven't met this person, so I don't even hardly know what to say other than she's a writer and an actress and a musician. So, oh my gosh, it's going to be a surprise to everybody, including me. So let's go have some fun. <laughs> Hey, it's Honey Gregory again, and you know it, you know it. I've got cool, most awesome guests tonight. And of course, this person came from Bronson. So my co-host tonight is Bronson Culver. Hey, Bronson. Hey, ladies. Tell, tell us who we have here is the beautiful, beautiful lady tonight. Well, she's a daggum devil woman because she's killed me three times. Wait, uh, who are we talking about here? Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, we are joined <laughs> by actress, cosplayer, model, and I'm very excited for what's been happening to her in the last year or so. Author, yes. Sarah Fritas Scott. Welcome, Sarah. Hey. Thank Hi, you honey, you're so me. pretty. Hello, girl. I only got some cuties on here. It's always more fun. <laughs> We're all in the same group. We're all cuties. Mm, yes. <laughs> wow well I, it's a pleasure to have you on my show i really appreciate it and thanks bronson as always for bringing someone amazing like you always do because you're so awesome and thanks brandy i know you're back there somewhere bye brandy <laughs> <laughs> okay cooking, cooking dinner in the background as always i yeah. know she, and, on, I, and on cat duty on cat patrol i'm cat jealous because you always have good cooking going on over there. I tell you, Brandy is the most clever woman I have ever met in my life. That woman can do anything. Well, uh, I know she has to put up with Bronson, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I have water. Oh. I have a hearing in the morning. I have to get up the crack of dawn, so Aww. I can't have a headache in the morning. I understand. Yeah. I don't blame you. I'm bummed. But whatever. Ooh. You know me. I don't drink that much anyway. So, all right, Bronson, you always yell at me, so you better get busy with you. <laughs> <laughs> with your questions well i have a lot of things uh, we can go back and forth on tonight but probably uh i think your book uh, uh the first one was uh, rise of midnight correct and it came out when well um i self-published in 2019 and as october of last year i was picked up by a traditional mid-sized publishing house Ooh. and they re-released my first book which technically is the first half of my first book because it was too long uh. so they re-released it with a new cover august 1st so technically i'm re uh publishing and re coming back out with my series my vampire witch casting demon series and Whoa. so it's a lot of fantasy and of course vampires i love vampires so yep. um but yeah, it's been a wild ride. Um, it's definitely uh, different than I was expecting, but in a good way. It's just been a lot of adjustment coming from self-published to working with a publishing house. So it's, oh, it's, been, it's been crazy. I think you're an author too, aren't you? I think you probably know the story. Oh, not like you are, girl. You wrote girl, good hush. stories. I, I have, a, I have a, a, just some fun books. Mine are just self-published fun stuff. Nothing like a oh, no. long novel or anything. Girl, hush. Mine was self-published too. And so... <laughs> I totally feel it. It was definitely, um, but yeah, it's, it's been good. It's been, I've been, I'm a very nervous person. I'm sure you could tell. I just told Bronson, I was like, I'm so nervous about this podcast. Oh, so was, oh gosh. So, but, uh, so I was really nervous about stuff, but, um, my publisher is really author forward. Thank God. And they were willing to work with the author on like their, you know, their word isn't final. It is. But if you want to talk to them about certain things, um, uh, they're willing to listen and talk to you and as opposed to some publishing companies that are like, nope, our word is it. And, you know, you're just writing the book. We do everything else kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I got really lucky. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Because I've heard some nightmare stories, you know, they take over and you don't really have much say so anymore. 
Yes, I've heard of that's two. That's good. So series. are they splitting it up into two books, like a series? Yes. So Ooh. originally I published two uh, books. They were both about 500 pages long. And oh, they that split is long. Both, yeah, <laughs> at 11 font. <laughs> So oh my gosh. Took, yeah. That's a lot of detail, girl. That's so a lot right. of story. Oh my God, girl. Uh, so they took each book and split them both directly in half and we're going to republish them each six months apart. So oh. the second half of my first book will come out six months from now. Very um, cool. There's a lot of story because I started writing it when I was 16. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's well, why good it's so you. big. Good for you. It's good to have good some novel. good stories in your head. They say everybody has at least one novel in their head, but you know. Oh yeah, I feel I, it. <laughs> I, I've written several stories, one complete book, several short stories. A lot of they're not so much books, but scripts, you know. But mm -hmm. we're not here to talk about me. But uh, and no. one I did, I, I did write Sarah in my movie script that almost got made, but it was the year COVID hit. Mm. And I had Sarah play two characters in it so I could kill her twice. Yeah, he wanted to kill <laughs> but anyway, he wanted to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh but course. Sarah, I do want to I do want to say congratulations because a lot of people that self-publish these things, that's all they ever get to do. Yeah. So for you to actually mm -hmm. get a publishing company to get behind your work, that's a big deal. That's amazing. Oh, Good for you. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me, Bronson. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Probably the last. <laughs> He's oh, like my big brother. He's oh. always teasing me and we're always going back and forth. But oh my yes. gosh. He literally is like my big brother. <laughs> Aww, that's awesome. And you're just now telling me about this gorgeous lady. Oh, you're so sweet, girl. <laughs> He's I'm like, not. keep that crazy bat behind the <laughs> He's like, don't don't talk to Sarah. She's crazy. <laughs> no, that's not what I he said. He now. said she's a mess. Oh, he just—he must be drinking tonight. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his tea. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so crazy. Here, Doctor Pepper. Oh, foo -foo. oh, it's not mixed. Foo -foo drink. Mm. Oh, okay. It's my usual foo foo: Tito's foo -foo mango puree and lemonade. Puree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a soap? <laughs> <laughs> Purell. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a shot of tequila, so my brain's not all the way there. Right? That's all right. Y'all y'all party down. <laughs> and I was gonna say real quick, I know this podcast will come out after the fact, but you're having your first in-store, kind of first in-store, but you're for your book, you're having your first in-store book signing. Yay! Yeah, so the first year you. I self-published was literally right before COVID happened and mm -hmm. all the bookstores were not doing in-store yeah. signings. They were doing, actually, I don't even think they were doing virtual. They just completely shut it down. And wow. so I was like, well, dang, I guess I'll never do a book signing. And uh, <laughs> I got republished. I was like, all right, let me just try this again. So my first one is uh, in Covington, Tennessee, which is about an hour from where I live right now, but it's going to be across from a, a I guess a comic book or anime convention called Covington Comic Con. So there'll be traffic coming from the Comic Con. And I was like, oh, that's perfect because I am I love to cosplay too. So I was like, all right, I'm going to bring some crazy stuff. I do uh, custom hand dyed wigs and prints wow. and stuff like that that I'll try to sell too with my books because I don't know. Wow. How well that'll sell. Well, we'll Brandy, Brandy owns a couple of your um, wigs. Oh, oh wow. I forgot. Does she still have those? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Wow. Ooh, I'm Excuse glad me. she could enjoy him so long. Well, she used she used one of them for her Harley Quinn or uh, Harley Quinn it mashup. Wait, and then what? She, yeah, she did a she actually did it at Texas Frightmare the year we all went. I just don't think you saw her in the album. Oh, I did not. I would love to see that. You'll have yeah, to see she the mixed, pictures. Yeah, I, she mixed Harley Quinn with Pennywise, and then she actually used the other one, believe it or not, for um oh for Tree from Happy Death Day. Oh, are you serious? I yeah. just recently saw that movie too. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> it's really it's underrated. Wow, like I was like, how have you not seen this before? <laughs> yeah, we went to see it the night it premiered, and I literally went on the and ordered that mask the night because I wanted to cosplay that character. Of course, and, <laughs> but it's a it was a rubber mask, and so when I met Rob Mello, who plays the killer, the baby face killer. He's like, wrong mask, dude. It's rubber. That's a plastic <gasps> mask. And I said, Rob, I ordered this the night your movie premiered. And he was like, how the hell did that happen? I said, I don't know, but this is what I got. So he was like, well, that's, you know, anyway, he was awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my yeah. God. I actually 
No, I'm not, I actually have his phone number in my phone. But anyway, wow. the, the killer from Happy Death Day, I actually have his phone number. Yeah. <laughs> He knows, no, he, really, he, exactly. he knows everybody. He and Brandy met. He knows everybody. Me and him, me and Brandy met him at Smoky Mountain Fan Fest, and he took like a thousand pictures of us. Oh, Let's get back to you. Are you are you at Covington Comic Con this weekend? Um, our buddy Josh Mason. We'll talk about him later, but um, it's, it's more of a pop culture thing, though, and not so much anime. But you know, you know how the anime kids try to take over everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but um, for that crowd now, <laughs> yeah. But you know, Covington's been pretty big, and you know, uh, was it Jam Books and Records is not far from the convention. So I think they said it was walking. You business. should get some good crossover traffic. We may even come visit you. <gasps> if you do, that would be awesome. Yeah, and maybe Honey will fly down. No, oh, I got you, Honey. <laughs> fly down where? Where's it? Where? Where? <laughs> it's um. It's right near Memphis. It's about an oh, hour. Oh, Memphis. Yeah. I think that's the original cover. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like a seven-hour drive. Woof. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I was just oh, in... visual. I was in... Uh... Oh, is that the book? The original. Oh, that's my... Oh, published. so cool. Yeah, they changed the cover and everything, which is understandable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they changed the cover and obviously split it in two because it was big. Mm-hmm. But... Is that oh, for... My... Is it geared towards teenagers or well, adults? It, it's young adult, but it which is really strange i i did gear towards young adult but i've had men in their 60s be like i really resonated with your character i'm like huh <laughs> it really oh. blew me out of the way. so i've had a really wide range of people in their like really preteens, and then people way wow. older than me that were like i really enjoyed your book i was like, are you just saying that because you because you are my friend you can tell me if you hated it but wow. i've had it's been weird. So I told my publisher and they just said, well, let's mark it as adult and mm-hmm. adult fantasy. Mm-hmm. And so when they put it in their stores and so on, they just put it in the adult section. But apparently a lot of young adult readers also you know, mm-hmm. move over to the adult. So wow. I did write it originally as a young adult. It's from the point of view of a 17 year old girl. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said it's you were just, 16 when you started writing it. Yeah. Now that's true. But here's the thing with that is when I wrote it, um, I wrote it off and on for a couple of years. And then I went through a really bad situation in my late twenties. And when I was done, you know, everything was finished with that. I kind of sat down and I was like, I need to do something with this book. And I pulled it back up and worked what, when I originally wrote it, I had handwritten it and oh, wow. I didn't have a laptop back in the day. And um, I pulled it back up and I was like, wow, this is horrible. Let me rewrite. This is awful. So I reached, I was in college and um, I had two hours between one of my classes. So I'd go in the computer lab and like type it up on my little like Aww. USB drive and stuff. And I retyped it up and I let a cl- couple close friends read it who I knew would be honest and not just be like, oh, it's great. Like, I yeah, knew who would be honest and say, hey, you might want to, you know. And so I took their advice and. I re- whatever they thought I needed to revise, I revised. And then um, at first I did start uh, acquiring agents, like literary mm-hmm. agents. And mm-hmm. I kept finding people at the time were saying, I love your writing style, but I don't want to back vampire stories. I guess mm-hmm. it was the Twilight series, you know, the mm-hmm. Twilight series had taken over and it, they said it was oversaturated in that mm-hmm. genre and they really didn't want to represent vampire stories. And so I mean, I just back to back, it was almost the same thing. And I mean, hundreds of quarries. And I said, all right, I'm just going to do this by myself, and, yeah. which ended up being a lot of fun. I learned a lot yeah. and got to work with, uh, I got, had a lot of networking. I got to work with a lot of people, uh, just learning things from other authors, artists, and so on. And so I'm glad that I did start out that way because I did all the hard work behind the scenes, like the the mm-hmm. formatting and I had to learn to do all this stuff by myself wow. and now that I have somebody else that does it I can appreciate it more yeah and I feel more like hey I I remember when I had to take my whole five seven hundred page book or whatever and format it line by line I did that by myself when I self-published and it was a nightmare <laughs> so it was it was a good experience and I'm glad I did it and um, I think that it taught me a lot too, because I think when I went into it, I was really starry eyed and kind of, oh, I'm going to become famous and I'm going to be a New York bestseller. You know, that I had to learn that, hey, that doesn't happen to everybody. Got to have a dream though. Girl. Yeah. You have to have your goal, but you gotta shoot was, for the stars. Exactly. But it's good. It, it, it taught me to 
not necessarily say, hey, that's never going to happen, but mm-hmm. it did teach me just to put in the hard work too. Mm-hmm. Writing is not the only thing you do as an author. There's a whole lot more backing it. And mm-hmm. I learned a lot. So it was. Sounds like you did it just right. Oh, girl, I hope so. Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like you did it just right. But well, I'll try to, it needs just, to be. just a quick note. And uh, while Brandy's in earshot, uh, I wrote when I was at UT Knoxville, a vampire story. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It was short story fiction con- uh, contest at UT. And I entered and I think I beat like 200 people for first place. And it's short story is called Eternally Single. Um, and I wrote, and I, I, I was sitting in my hammock and I was like, oh, I got to get this out there. And I was like, oh, what am I going to write about? And I was like, let me do a vampire story. And you were saying, the guys were saying that that's an oversaturated market. Bull crap. Ever since Dracula hit the market, vampires have been one of the most consistently profitable yeah. franchises in film and in books and in comics yeah, and on television. So those guys are idiots. But I'll try to remember. I'll, I'll remember <laughs> now that, uh, I'll, have Brandy, that. I'll have Brandy uh, get a copy of that to both of y'all because I literally wrote it in 20 minutes and then I won first place and I was like, what? Wow. So yes, I would love to read that. That's awesome. So, so then I, I was like, okay, I got all cocky. I said, oh, I can write anything now. So then I started <laughs> writing what I really wanted to write, this more demented stuff, and I never placed again. Oh, but okay. It wasn't super demented. It was, uh-huh. <laughs> mm, and, and I don't know if I want to like, read those. I know. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> no, one of them was about an abusive husband who gets his comeuppance at a circus oh, oh no, okay. i might read that yeah all right yeah. i'll read that yeah yeah in there so all right yeah he gets <laughs> well he get well he gets killed <laughs> at, uh, at a circus it's called tilt a world but anyway um uh yeah so that yeah i'll get that to you guys i'd love for you guys maybe to i should uh convert my um screenplay into a novel <gasps> and get that out there maybe yes. you two could work together well, I, 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 I started I out. She needs me. She's good to go. <laughs> well, I've got a, I've got a full feature screenplay and I was learning how to write a novel. It was originally going to be a novel. And then I thought, ugh, I don't know. I've always wanted to, you know, write a screenplay and do that. But then, you know, like you had, you send out people trying to get a talent agent, a literary agent, and they all just say, no, thanks, no, thanks. Not what we're doing, yeah. you know, whatever. And so maybe I'll turn mine into a novel. Well, imagine you and Sarah and and Brandy could be your assistant. Y'all sitting at a table selling your books. The line of men would be around the corner, and probably oh, they wouldn't even that, see me. They would just look at probably several true. women. First of all, Honey, no. who? <laughs> Whatever. That is not even true. She just blended in into the fabric. Right Nuh-uh, there. the blonde bombshell. They'd be seeing you first. <laughs> it would be like bookends. They'd just be like, oh, one of each. <laughs> oh, a dark hair, light hair. Oh, I see what's going on. A light haired old lady covering up her gray. Old lady, okay, whatever. <laughs> Blonde, what are you brunette, like 39? Jet black. <laughs> Bronson, I think you have more gray hair than me. Oh, I do. You got yeah, you got that Superman, oh, that aging Superman hair. Aging Superman. There you go. <laughs> My Superman curl has turned gray. Oh, you know. that's okay. <laughs> all right brandy can brandy's good at everything she can put some hair dye in there for you there you go yeah she got this uh I do wanna... <laughs> well you're gonna ask her about her yeah. art and well and, I, I, and I, I, musician I playing to... well uh, honey i don't know, if you know this, <laughs> but sarah dresses up like disney princesses and goes to uh birthday parties Oh, yeah. The uh, she cosplays stuff. as superheroes and goes to children's hospitals. I can see her being Wonder Woman real fast. Oh, yeah. That's one of my things. Yep, yep, yep. She already knows. <laughs> yeah. I did Wonder Woman when I was in high school, but I was a blonde, but uh-huh. eh, whatever. Whatever. That's a good variant. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Who cares? How, how, <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> how, when you go to the when you go to like these children's hospital events, I man, how how awesome is that? That is really cool. It's actually a little jarring because you see kids in hospital beds hooked up to all Mm -hmm. these wires and they try to kind of warn you, but you don't really get it until you see it. Heartbreaking. It's it's really, you have to kind of just go somewhere else because Mm -hmm. you 
I in my head I thought okay I'm making them happy so I don't want to see a kid in the hospital bed in pain mm -hmm. but I think okay I'm making them happy this is a happy moment and they're mm -hmm. smiling and everything but yeah. if you're really sensitive especially towards young I don't have kids so it was yeah. I was able to kind of just go in my own world in my head but if you have young kids or kids in general <laughs> and you're able to relate and just see a kid like that it's, it's kind of hard I mean I, some of my friends that were there were getting real teary-eyed and so if you can get past that part and just say, hey, this is a happy moment and you have to know that I'm here to help them to make them mm -hmm. feel good and not kind of uh, register where you are, I guess. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds kind of weird. You have to kind of disconnect a little bit. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I, it's crazy because I had never done this. I have always done, I mean, I've done cosplay since I was 21 and I kind of fell out of the con scene and I was like, I feel like I want to give back to the community. I just don't know how. Yeah. And so I started doing um, princess parties as Princess Jasmine and Wonder Woman and I have a couple others and um, I hooked up with a local charity in Memphis called Cosplay. It's like C-A-U-S-E, Cosplay ah, cool. Memphis. And so they go to like Le Bonheur and uh, St. Jude and stuff. And mm -hmm. they, uh, they the whole group has, they have like Batman, Spider-Man. They have all these cosplayers oh, that wow. are kind of more geared towards wanting to, you know, work with kids and do more yeah. like community kind of service things. And, and I was really scared at first. I was like I said, I don't have kids and I don't babysit. So I was like, how am I, how am I going to, I hope I can do this. And <laughs> thank goodness, I just, whew. So it, it's cool. a lot of fun. It's definitely a different experience than I guess you would probably think, but it's definitely, I think it's worth it. It's worth yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure awesome. it is. I, I, I haven't done anything like that, but that's amazing. It's always good to, you know, volunteer and do charity work and help others. But the one time I dressed up like Wonder Woman, we went into a, Safeway or something, and the kids just start following you around like the Pied Piper, like oh, yeah, they think you're the real thing. It's yeah. so crazy, yeah. and they're just so cute, you know. I know, like pinch your cheeks. <laughs> I know, right? So that is so cool. And you play piano and violin. Yes. Is there something I, you don't do? I mean, the list is getting longer. I cannot sing, girl. I can't oh. <laughs> dance. I can only dance if I've been drinking, but I think I can dance. I don't know what everybody else thinks. So that's, yeah, I can't do kind of the performing arts. As long as I'm by myself, I think I can do it. But um, I learned to play the violin. I started playing when I was 12 in elementary, or was that, I can't remember. Yeah, elementary school, so I was younger than 12. But I played all the way up through college, and when we moved here, uh, my dad was a Marine, and when he retired, we moved to Memphis, Tennessee, and they did not have that in the colleges. They didn't have it in schools. They only had band. They didn't have orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, they did have a symphony orchestra for a part of a church that we attended, so I kind of did that for a little while, and I think they kind of fell apart, but... So I just, I sold my classic violin and I bought an electric violin. I was like, I'll just play in my room and I can plug up my headphones into this electric violin and play by myself. So that's fun, but it's just, it's not like playing with a big group. And yeah, yeah. I try to still have fun with it. With the piano, um, I know how to read music, but I do not know the keys on the piano. So I learned to play by ear for the piano. Oh, wow. So, which is, I guess, kind of, I don't know if it's lazy or what, but I was just like, whatever, I'm going to learn to play this song. Oh, some so, of the best. Some of the best musicians of all time can't read music. Yeah. They oh, that makes me feel so much better. So yeah. people say that. I'm like, I can read music for the piano. I don't know how different it is for the, or I'm sorry, for the violin. But I, I was like, I don't know how different it is for the, technically it's a keyboard. But <laughs> so I just play in my room and I have fun and I just pick out me like at the time when I used to watch a lot of anime, I'd pick out a song. Like, I love that song. I'm going to learn to play it. But, <laughs> yeah. I don't do any of that publicly anymore. That stays in my, and yeah. Behind closed doors. <laughs> well, it shows your level of intelligence because by you know playing musical instruments is like learning a new language. They say, it, "Really? Oh yeah. my gosh!" Yeah, and I'm dyslexic. I can barely speak English, so I can't no, learn no. anything. <laughs> don't worry, well, I say stuff backwards all the time. <laughs> I don't know if either one of you follow. Uh, uh, you may know her surname is Tina Guo, Tina G U O, but she mm -hmm. plays uh, the electric cello. She tours with Hans Zimmerman, but she's the one that created, and she's young, she created that iconic Wonder Woman theme. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yes. She, she oh, that's out. awesome. Look oh, her up on God. Facebook, social media, both. Her name's Tina Guo, G-U-O. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. But yeah, she's always she, like Hans Zimmerman. She just tours with Hans Zimmerman everywhere. Wow, that's freaking awesome! Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> now I, I wanted to mention another your your cosplay from the Mummy. 
Anas and Amun or Amunet? I have uh, two now. Oh, I have three. I also have the uh, Scorpion Queen, Ooh. not the Scorpion King. It's I'm talking like, about is the one from the Tom Cruise movie where the actress Amunet with the face paint and the yeah. rags. Okay. Well, where the actress uh, commented on your cosplay. Oh no, that was the one with Brandon Fraser. That was the oh, mummy, okay. the first mummy, uh, Anux and Amun, the actress Patricia Vasquez. I actually got to talk to her oh, on wow. a video chat. Wow. Um, she was in, I, th I think she was in Mexico and it was sort of post pandemic <laughs> and they were doing, um, I guess the video instead of doing it in person. And my, well, he was my fiance at the time. My husband went and didn't tell me he bought a session with her and it was two minutes and it was really expensive and he bought two minutes and she stayed on there with me for almost 20 minutes. I felt oh, so wow. <laughs> I felt so bad. She was so sweet, though. She's a Aww. really awesome person. And she does a whole lot of humanitarian work um, with the indigenous people of South America. She, like, oh, helps wow. bring clean water and food and so on to, like, the, the families out there that aren't as well off and so on. And she, not only she's an awesome actress, she's gorgeous, but she's also a genuinely good person. And it was oh, just wow. so refreshing to talk to somebody like that. I was like, wow, yeah. you're famous and you're actually cool and you're actually and nice, nice. And you're, yeah. it was so cool. Not and up. indigenous people, those are the people that are missing fingers? I think, no, the indigenous oh, people of South America, the people, you know, they, he knows, okay. <laughs> <laughs> honey she's shaking her head you know people I that know. were born there okay so she's helping those people it's mainly the kids it's just bringing uh clean water to the schools and bringing them <laughs> books and stuff like that and oh real quick note about brandy brandy went for two or three years in a row down to the very bottom i think it's called a metapet mexico and she would go down there as part of a missionary group of eye doctors and they would go down there these poor communities where the people had no insurance no hospitals really and they would just line up and fix their eyes give them whatever surgery they needed everything so brandy went down there that's awesome i think three years in a row and stayed mm -hmm. for like a week doing and with a bunch of eye doctors and people from memphis and all over the country just doing fixing people's eyes that have no money no eye doctors no hospitals mm -hmm. and i remember specifically one year she came back and it was like 90 degrees and i picked her up from the airport and she's wearing shorts and i was like oh honey that's a bad idea because there was a foot of snow on the ground here oh oh my gosh <laughs> poor thing <laughs> that's oh awesome gosh. i think that's how i got my lasik surgery several years ago the dr saunders i don't know if you know that name she was a lasik eye surgery or eye surgery or I, I should say I was going to say Brandy probably knows her, but they were going to Africa and doing that. And oh, if wow. you wanted to get one, buy one eye, get one free, as long as you donated towards their missions trip to Africa to do a laser LASIK surgery on their, I guess, the people that they were going to go to Africa for. And that's how oh, wow, I that's got cool. my LASIK surgery. So that was pretty cool. That's It's probably about the same time Brandy was going down there because she did say they were going down with a group mm -hmm. of eye surgeons and eye and yep. nurses and so on so wow. she probably it. that's oh, awesome i did take this off the other wall I don't know oh no it. you actually framed it you should just blur my face out. <laughs> so that is honey that is sarah ryan mccrory and uh i'm over there in the corner Is that you over there there he is i saw him oh my god oh there you are. i see you now that's awesome uh, yeah huh? I framed it. it has like 170 so cool. people wow yeah sarah killed me twice in that movie and also twice how do you kill it. someone twice he i did it. i put a mask on oh. well, the oh, girl played two trained, different characters the girl that trained brandy how to wrestle a black widow which we've discussed in them she was over there to be a part of the thing and i was like hey black widow show sarah how to do a body slam sarah had all this gear especially on her back and Black Widow was like, okay, and just picked her up and threw her on the ground. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, Widow, no, I meant go through the motions oh. and show her how to do that. Oh. Ouch. Remember that? You know, you're the one that busted my thumb, though. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> so she did that thing, and I was thank I thankful I had that big backpack on. And I was like, all hmm. right, I'll be all right. This kind of sucks. I, I did not mean for her to do that. I meant no. for her to show you. Well, it, he was like, okay, and just I thought it was you. funny. I don't know. I guess I just, I take, I don't know. I guess I take things differently. And I was just like, <laughs> that kind of hurt, but it was funny. 
But uh, no, Bronte, you, I think, I don't know if it was Josh or somebody else told you to teach me to do the scissor thing. Yeah, the flying head scissors. Yes. And you, it's not your fault. It's because I got scared. I was up there and the way you put me down, I jammed my thumb into the back of your knee. And I don't know if you remember that, but I went home with a black (laughs) thumb. It turned up black. I thought I broke it. I'm so sorry. And my husband, or my, he was my boyfriend at the time i think and he was like who did that i was like dylan it was a stunt accident <laughs> he's like why and are you I, doing stunts i was like is that what you think <laughs> well I, I wish we could have figured out how to use that move it, it was way too short of a oh notice. no and, i couldn't have the, the, i well, am the least so, athletic person in the world so and, and it's a move where you, you know <laughs> where i picked you up and i was slinging you around so you would sling me you know where your legs came up from my head and you would sling me every time i did it you went titanic on me I can't help it. I was, I was like, nervous. So I was just completely bored. Like, I was like, oh, God, I where it scared me. I was like, I need to catch the ground. I'm scared right now. I, I'm not a stunt person. That's another thing I can't do, honey. I'm not a stunt person. I can do a few kicks. I took kickboxing for like six months. So I can do a couple high kicks. But, but you this know, kind of stuff he was trying to make me do. I was like, no, Bronson, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> but, you know, we, we coordinated that scene with you and Black Widow. And I thought it turned out really well. Well, we didn't do the scissor thing. We ended up yeah. doing the thing where she picked me up and that was fine. But yeah. I was like, I'm not about to scissor on somebody. That sounds, that's terrifying. I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. Good, good time. Just don't scissor. Good don't times, scissor yeah. random people, Sarah. Oh, that's not where I was going with that. Oh, I'm I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I said that. <laughs> what is it called? Scissor neck? What is it called? Uh, flying head scissors. Okay. I had it sort of. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Y'all you are, are just crazy. I know. I'm sorry, honey. Crazy. You have to witness this craziness here. <laughs> I believe it. I've seen. Wild. I've seen pictures, but I haven't experienced it. So oh, poor honey. I'm sorry. But honey has done, like she mentioned uh, in the last podcast we did together, some uh, uh, martial arts training. I go sis. Yeah, I, I think I got to my purple belt, but then I got COVID and. You know, you know I had out. like long COVID, and so every time I tried to yeah. test, I was like, pat, nearly pass out. It just got weird. My heart was all crazy, and I couldn't breathe, so it's hard for oh me to God. do high impact ac- exercises. So I thought, well, I'll take a year off, and then now it's been two years. <laughs> I haven't done anything. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, I used to be a I used to be a personal trainer when I was nineteen. What training? What? Uh, just weight doing weights. I was obsessed with weightlifting because mm-hmm. um, I was a wrestler when I was younger. And um, no, I just, I was obsessed with working out, rollerblading, working out, tennis, yes, obsessed did. with it. Yes, Athletic. And now yes. I see the word gym and I'm like, <laughs> what's that? I know. I know. I used yeah. to go. I mean, if I didn't go at least, if I used to not go at least four times a week, I was like upset with myself. Now I just think, oh, okay, well, mm, I could go. Nah, that's okay. <laughs> I do work out the house. I do curls, uh, shoulder presses, push ups. You know, I'm 50. I'm still I'm, I'm trying to do it, but you know, my buddy's my buddy. My body's a little busted from the wrestling, but I try to do as much as I can. I try not to have that dad bot, especially since I don't. Oh my have kids. gosh. Well, I don't have kids. So I don't want to get that big beer gut, especially since I don't drink beer. <laughs> it's not very becoming. I, I, it's probably a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Brandy might have to trade you in. Uh-oh. Well, you know, the last few years, the dad bod has been like the end thing for some girls. I don't know. No. Oh, honey. <laughs> Sarah, I'll tell you one thing I know about honey. She <laughs> likes the buff boys. Yeah. Oh, yes, sis. I got oh, you. Yeah. Same. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The broad shoulders. Oh, uh, girl, and that tiny waist and that yes. tushy. Yes, so girl, cute. yes. She is just, we're at the same person since we have dark hair. That's it. <laughs> yep yep yep. Same yep, sis. yep. I love the yep. guys. So that's like when we were in uh where were we um uh, evansville we went to that restaurant bar, bar. there was this guy Car playing player. in the band oh i remember oh, my god so we were sitting <laughs> we, we're sitting at the same like, table hello <laughs> there's this big muscled up guitar player right and oh sitting, my god we're, we're sitting two, two feet away from each other and honey texts me and goes yummy <laughs> 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 she just has good taste, Bronte. God, hey, he was a good-looking kid. He was, was wrong with he that. Was, he probably was what late kid. late twenties. 
Tony went right up there and danced right in front of him. I sure <laughs> did. I was getting a good <laughs> close look. I was like, damn. She had a couple. <laughs> she, had, she had a few sips of a uh, Woodward. Uh, Woodward. Oh, what awesome. is it? I didn't drink the whole Woodford. thing. You guys drank. I can't. Of Woodford Reserve went up there right. Couple, in I drank about half a shot or serving. You finished it. <laughs> I did reluctantly. I quit drinking whiskey oh, like many years ago. Yes, he was like, oh, I don't know. I don't like this. Oh, <laughs> the lies I'm gonna let a shot of Woodford go to waste. I'm sorry. No, okay. Oh, that was a good oh, wait, place, uh, though. We have time for my questions. Uh, you're running out of time. You got three minutes. Oh crap! All, All right, right Sarah. Okay. Your favorite genre of horror movies? There's different genres of horror movies. Oh, slashers, horror. ghosts, aliens, uh, psychological. Um, I like paranormal. Demonic possession. Ah. So is that paranormal? I like that, I guess. What? Which one? Par is paranormal still possession? And yeah, well, uh, yeah. I like, okay. okay. I what like you... kind of the ghost stuff. That scares me the most. Actually, the ring scared. The... I can't cuss on here, can I? The, you know what? Oh, you can cuss on here. No, that's okay. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to, but, but the, the kind of the um, possession or paranormal, not the paranormal activity movie itself, because it, I was I didn't, wasn't crazy about the way it was filmed, but that, for some reason, paranormal stuff scares me more than somebody breaking in my house or whatever. Like, I just, I'm more scared of the dead than I am the living, which I'm told so, is the other way around. If you haven't seen it, go watch the original Japanese version of that movie. Is that not the original, but dubbed? No, you're talking about The Ring with Naomi Watts? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. No, no, that's a remake from a Japanese movie. Oh no, that's mm -hmm. probably really scary. I don't know if I want to oh, see that. Oh, it's so much worse really. than Japanese. Really, I bet it is. Oh, the Japanese tell really good ghost stories. So yes, real they quick, do. so real quick. Okay. Um, your favorite vampire film of all time? It's either Interview with a Vampire or Twenty Eight Days. Uh, Twenty is it Twenty Days of Night? Twenty Eight Days of Night. 30 Days of 30 Night. 30 Days of Night, yes. That's a good those. one, because that thing's only like 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's, that's ridiculous. God. I've and seen that one. It's very gory, honey. If yes, honey, you would love it. Gory stuff. Oh, I do like, not love gory. You know eh, better. Yeah, you might not it's, like that one. It's a Sarah, good story. It's based on a book or a graphic yeah, novel. The, yeah, the main uh, vampire in that, the main guy vampire, mm -hmm. that's General Ludendorff from Wonder Woman. Yeah, I noticed it. I was like, I don't recognize him without his fangs and his contacts. Danny Houston and uh, Angelica cool. Houston's uh, brother. Uh, oh, I didn't know they were related. I thought uh -huh. that was a coincidence. He's awesome. He's really good in anything I've ever seen. All right. So, oh, so we got one minute, right? One minute. Let's go. Okay. Wrap it up, honey. Wrap it up. All right. How can they find you? Oh, gosh. I'm on Instagram. Sapphire Art. So it's S A F. Fire I R E. It's my initials S A F. Well, it was my initials before I got married, so now my initials are S A F S. Anyway, Sapphire Art on Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, and Sarah A. Frida Scott on the spot of my personal Facebook page. You can get my books on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or Jumpmaster Press, which is my publishing company. You can also get it anywhere online where my books are sold. Um, I have a YouTube channel with all of my indie art, uh, indie art, indie uh, acting stuff that I have. Uh, but buy my books! Awesome, <laughs> buy her books! Thank you guys. Rise this was midnight. amazing. Thank it was you, so honey. nice yeah. meeting you. Thank you, Bronson. Thank you, honey, as for always, co-host Sarah. I hate you. I'll see you. I soon. hate you. I'll kill you one day. <laughs> I'll kill you. I'll kill, kill you again. I love I'll kill you, guys. you again. Yes. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. I enjoyed it so much. Bye, Brandon. <laughs> Bye, Roseanne and Brandy. Ah. Bye, honey. I love you. Bye. I love you. Talk to you later. Let's do it again, girl. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Bye, girl. Okay. Bye, bye. Did he just leave? He did. He I'm left. right here. No, you didn't. You left us. You left.